M&S Suite 19 brings some new and exciting features to TerraVista 19. One of the most exciting things that we've done is continue on the success that we've had in Suite 18 by adding a lot of overall performance improvements in the TerraVista builds, regardless of which output compiler you're building. There are, however, some dramatic increases in performance in certain areas. This includes building CDB imagery with and without burn-in and blending. This also includes VBS building of GS models. So the GS model conversion in the VBS output is significantly faster, and in some cases up to a thousand times faster. It also includes the CDB finalize, which is being distributed across more of your available agents. Also included in this release are some significant stability improvements, especially when running distributed builds. So when you have multiple agent machines running across your network, supporting your TerraVista build, there is a significant improvement in stability and overall quality of the build. Another item in this release is the ability to handle more and complex vector data by improving a lot of our topological algorithms, including TIN generation, planar graph operations, CDB flattening. We're also introducing a new option in our CDB output compiler. When you're using elevation flattening, which is enabled right here in our CDB output compiler, there is a new option called Enable Elevation Smoothing Around Flattened Areas. This is a great new option that allows the flattening to integrate better in the terrain around it by adding a little bit of smoothing around the edges. Now, you shouldn't see as many jagged edges around your flattened areas when you're flattening roads. Now that the build has completed, we'd like to demonstrate our next exciting feature the importing of raw OpenStreetMap data. When opening the import dialog, you can see that I now have an option to import OpenStreetMap vectors, and this includes both OSM and PBF versions of OSM data. Here, we're going to import some data for downtown Montreal and see what that looks like as it's importing. As you can see here, TerraVista divides up the data into as many feature sets, vector files per feature set, as is available in the data. Here, we have road data, railways, fences, waterways, power lines, buildings, and natural areas or land use vectors. You will have as many vectors as you have data sets. So, for example, you may not see power lines if the OSM data you're importing does not include power lines. A useful aspect of this feature is that it also includes some conversion of attribution. By looking at the actual vectors themselves, you can see that these vectors have FS code and FSC and LTN indicating the number of lanes. It also has traffic flow and a few other attributes that describe the road in better detail. A useful aspect of this feature is that it also includes some conversion of attribution. By looking at the actual vectors themselves, you can see that these vectors have FS code and FSC and LTN indicating the number of lanes. It also has traffic flow and a few other attributes that describe the road in better detail. TerraVista automatically interprets OSM attribution and attempts to assign TerraVista attribution accordingly based on the data available. In this example, we can already see that this road data will be processed by the correct selector and feature style. We would also like to tell you about some of the enhancements that we've done to our material classification editor and generator. As you can see, we're opening up some imagery tiles. There are two tiles in this view, and we're going to open up a classification that we've already created for this imagery. You may notice that there are new options along the ribbon at the top of the screen. 
These are new options for the preview that will allow you to improve your workflow and how you visualize the preview for your material classification. Once the preview is enabled, we can see the preview for every file that you have on screen. If we zoom into an area on one of these imagery tiles, press the new Refresh button, then once we zoom out, we can see that it only activated the preview for this one tile and not both, making the preview a little faster. If the Options is set to Single File, it should do the preview for the first file that was loaded into your scene. In the Project Parameters Authoring tab, in the Material Classification section, we will enable a new checkbox called Use Culture Data for Classification. This feature addresses a common problem that is visible here. When classifying data, you have sections of data that are very difficult to color classify because of the colors in the scenes. In this example, the water has a lot of waves, visual artifacts, shadows, and things that make it very difficult to color classify this section. As you can see from the preview, it didn't do a very good job in terms of determining whether that area was land or water. However, in this project, we have a nice land use vector which tells me exactly where the water is, like this vector is a river. If we look at the feature style, we can see that there's a raster material associated with it called water fresh flowing. Using this feature, we're going to see that when the preview finishes, this whole section here is now classified as water, with no visual artifacts or noise that might come from the waves or shadows or anything like that. The other thing that has changed in this preview is that it has taken into account the buildings. When we look at this building, we can see that it also has a raster material called roof concrete. If we don't want to change it, we can go ahead and burn it right into your material classification. When we now look at generated material output, it is exactly what we wanted. When hovering over this area, we can see that the material is water fresh flowing. This area is asphalt, which came from our color classification, and this area is roof concrete, which came from our building vectors.